to start with, let's have some wise words from a famous legal scholar, Sir William Blackstone. Sir William Blackstone was an 18th century lawyer, he was a judge, and he was an academic at Oxford. He was the first person to try and pull together a comprehensive analysis of English common law. And I'm going to say more about him in a little while. But what he says here, I think is helpful for our purposes today. He says, I think it an undeniable position that a competent knowledge of the laws of that society in which we live is the proper accomplishment of every gentleman and scholar and highly useful, I had almost said essential, part of a liberal and polite education. Well, I don't know whether we'll achieve a competent knowledge of the law, but I hope that we'll provide a bit of general education on the law of England and Wales. So the aims of this course, the formal aims of this section of the course, are first of all, for you to have a basic understanding of the history of the common law, to identify several key features of the English legal system, and to recognise the way that the course works, what we expect of you, and uh, how to be successful in doing the course. But to start with, before we get into any of the history and the detail, I want to start with a very broad question, which is what is law? We're talking about the English legal system, we're talking about the laws of the land, but what is law? Now you'd think that that was a very simple question to answer, but in fact, it's one that's quite difficult. It's a question that has been struggled with uh, by legal theorists going back to Aristotle and Plato. And the question that people have struggled with is, what is the content of a law and how do we recognise a rule as a law? Now, we, we don't have time to go into the complexities of those really rather deep philosophical questions, uh, and that's something that you could do if you decide to go on to continue with the study of the law. But for the moment, what I want to do is for us to try and think about it in a rather pra practical way. So the starting point is that law is centrally concerned with the problem of social order. For human beings to live together in a society, they need to have rules to govern how they're going to live. Rules can be of many different types. We have informal social rules, we have rules of behaviour, we have rules of dress, we have rules of conversation. And these social rules are complied with as a matter of convention. If you don't follow the rule, you might be the subject of social disapproval or you might be excluded from a group. But as societies become more developed and become more complex, they need more formal rules for people to live together in an orderly way. So for introductory purposes, what we can say is that when we speak of the law in a democratic society, what we're thinking about are the rules that govern how we live and how we do business. And we are thinking about the rules that are backed by the coercive power of the state. And what I mean by that is that these are rules that we have to obey. And if we don't obey those rules, we will be made to pay some kind of a penalty, pay a fine, or perhaps go to prison. So when we talk about the law, we're talking about rules that we are obliged to follow. If we break a criminal law, then we may have to pay a fine or we may have to go to prison. If we break a non-criminal law, what we call a civil law, we will usually have to pay money compensation, what I will call damages. There's some more legal terminology that you'll get used to later on. Now this is not an idea. The idea that law is fundamentally concerned with order in society is not a new idea. I said it goes back that people have been struggling with this since the time of Aristotle. And Aristotle put it very pithily. He, Aristotle was a, a Greek critic, philosopher, uh, in, who uh, was uh, writing uh, many hundreds of years even before the birth of Christ. And what he said very simply is that law is order and good law is good order. So that underlines the idea of, what, of the purpose of law. But then moving on to the concept of a legal system. When we, say, when we talk about a legal system, what do we mean? The legal system constitutes all of the bits of the law and the surrounding machinery of justice. So well, the legal system comprises the laws produced by lawmaking bodies, parliaments, legislatures, uh, judiciary, and it also includes the institutions, processes, and personnel that contribute to the operation 
and enforcement of those laws. So when we talk about the legal system, we're talking about legislation, acts of parliament, common law, the decisions of judges in courts. We're talking about the workings of courts. We're talking about judges, what judges do and how they're appointed, about legal professionals, lawyers, solicitors, barristers, the people who operate the law. We're also talking in the criminal context about the police, about prosecutors, about juries. And in a broader context, we also talk about those organisations that support access to justice. So we're thinking about Citizens Advice Bureau, we're thinking about the provision of legal aid. All of these institutions, all of these processes, all of these personnel are part of the English legal system and they provide the machinery for the justice system to operate. Now later in the course we're going to talk about some of those institutions, processes and personnel in much greater detail. But for the moment I just want you to get a feel of what we're talking about when we talk about the English legal system as a whole. We talk about the English legal system, but those of you who live in the United Kingdom will know that it's made up of a number of different jurisdictions. So the United Kingdom is made up of England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. But when we talk about the English legal system, we are talking about the laws of England and Wales because Scotland and Northern Ireland have different legal systems. In fact, Scotland has laws that are completely unknown in uh, England and Wales. And one of the things that you might want to be aware of is that Wales itself is, become, is developing its own jurisdictional differences. And in time, we, Wales might itself have a separate legal system. But generally, when we're talking about the English legal system, then we're focusing on the laws and the machinery of the justice system in England and Wales. And when we're talking about the English legal system, when we're talking about the law, we need to have a sense of where the law comes from. What are the sources of law that we're going to be dealing about in this course? There are basically four sources of English law. And the buildings behind me are number one, the English Parliament. Number two, on the top is the Supreme Court, the UK Supreme Court, and below that the Royal Courts of Justice. So the sources of English law, one, the UK Parliament, two, uh, the Common Law Courts, three, the European Union, and four, the European Court of Human Rights. So our law comes from Parliament, that's legislation, statute, acts of parliament, written laws. I'll talk more about that later on. It comes from the common law decisions of judges sitting in courts, in the Supreme Court, Royal Court, Court of Appeal, High Court, and so on. But also, it comes from Europe, from the uh, European Commission and uh, European Council of Ministers, as well as the European Court of Human Rights. So looking at the English sources of law, uh, we have the UK Supreme Court and other courts of, uh, uh, other courts of uh, record that produce decisions that constitute the common law. And we have the, the UK Parliament, which produces acts of parliament, statutes and le legislation, the written law. So those are the two sources of English law. But we also have law that emanates from Europe, which is directly applicable within the English legal system. And these are laws that come from the European Union and are produced by the Council of the European Union and the uh, Parliament, Council of Ministers and the European Union Parliament and also their, uh, their commission. And they sit in Brussels in Belgium. But there's also law that emanates from the European Court on Human Rights uh, relating to the European Convention on Human Rights. And in 1998, the UK Parliament incorporated the European Convention on Human Rights into English law. So Euro the European Convention on Human Rights becomes a part of English law and that is a source of our, an additional source of our law. So those are the sources of law. Uh, although there are, uh, as I said, there's uh, statutes, common law and uh, European Union law, the most voluminous source of law in the English legal system, and probably for that reason, the most important source of law is the common law. And I want to spend a little bit of time on that, explaining what I mean by the common law, and thinking about how the common law developed many hundreds of years ago.